Today I'm going to demonstrate the EFAST exam. It stands for the Extended Focused Assessment with Sonography and Trauma. It's useful for patients presenting with blunt or penetrating trauma. The first focus is to look at the abdomen for intra-abdominal free fluid, as well as the sub view of the heart to look for a pericardial effusion. Secondly, you're going to look at the chest for signs of hemothorax, as well as pneumothorax. First place we're going to start is the right upper quadrant. We're going to place our probe here to look to identify the liver and the kidney. The bright white line in between is called Morrison's pouch. The idea here is that we want to scan through this interface because it's one of the more sensitive areas in the upper abdomen for free fluid. At this point, it's helpful to also angle your probe upwards so that you visualize the diaphragm and look above the liver and above the diaphragm. Here we're looking for fluid above the diaphragm. This would suggest a pleural effusion and in the setting of trauma, it would suggest a hemothorax. At this point, we also want to slide the probe inferiorly and we want to actually visualize the inferior tip of the liver because this has been shown to be one of the most sensitive areas for free fluid in the abdomen. The next place to look is the left upper quadrant. And at this point, we're trying to identify both the spleen and the kidney, uh, which we can visualize here. So again, it's helpful to fan through that interface. However, the left upper quadrant is a little bit different from the, the right upper quadrant because fluid is actually more likely to collect above the spleen under the diaphragm. So it's important to visualize the diaphragm up to 9 o'clock and we'll sweep through that interface as well. We'll also try to angle our probe to look above the diaphragm to again see if there's any fluid in the left chest suggestive of a hemothorax. The next place to look is the pelvis. So we'll orient our probe in a transverse manner initially. And our landmark here is the bladder, so it's a cystic fluid-filled structure. So we're going to sweep through this area to see if there is fluid outside of the bladder. And here it's also helpful to rotate the probe 90 degrees into a sagittal position. And from here, again, we see our bladder, which is our landmark. And we're going to sweep our probe side to side to look for fluid superior to the bladder. Then move on to look at the heart. So here we're taking a sub approach to the heart. We're in the epigastrium, we're aiming the probe up towards the left chest, and we are aiming to visualize the septum, which is the bright white line in between the two ventricles, as well as the right heart border. Uh, effectively, you want to visualize the right heart border all the way up to the septum in an appearance that looks like a seven, and then you know you have adequate visualization of the heart. And the idea here is that you want to sweep through, and we're looking for fluid along the right heart border that would be suggestive of a pericardial effusion. To finish off the extended fast exam, we're looking at the anterior chest to look for pneumothorax. Here we place our probe oriented in a vertical position with the marker pointing towards the patient's head, place the probe in the midclavicular line somewhere in the third or fourth rib interspace. Our landmark here is the ribs, which are bright and white with black shadowing beneath. And we're looking for the hyperechoic bright white line in between the two that looks like it's shimmering or scintillating. It looks like there's movement or what we call sliding at that line. So that is normal, and that suggests that the patient does not have a clinically significant pneumothorax on that side of the chest. And in general, you only need to look at one interspace in each hemithorax. So we can look at the right lung as well as the left lung. And again, we can see our two ribs and normal sliding. 